Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan. But never mind that. In this video, we're gonna take this Squire Bullet Strat, rip it apart, then we're gonna do some jimmying and some banging, and then stick the north end of something round in the south end of a hole. Cause that's how you turn cheap ceramic pickups into vintage offset Alnico pickups. Then we'll mic up an amp with a two preamp and a couple pedals and do a before and after comparison to see how that works. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned! Roll that beautiful bean footage. Here's the guitar we'll be modding today. This is a Squire Bullet Strat. I don't know exactly what year it is. I got it at a pawn shop. It's a really pretty guitar in my opinion. And the single coil pickups in it don't in any way sound bad. But I think we can give them the sound of very expensive vintage pickups. Super easy, and it's gonna cost almost nothing. Before we start ripping it apart, the first thing we need to do is check the current polarity of the pickups. It appears that the neck pickup is a north polarity, and the middle pickup is a south polarity. This is what gives you that quacky sound in a two and four positions. Either way, we just need to remember this for future reference. Now we can go ahead and take the pick guard off, and since taking out screws is kind of boring, I'll go ahead and speed the video up and use this as an opportunity to play some of the music I recorded with the P90 Les Paul Jr. we modified in last week's video. Okay, these are, as I suspected, ceramic pickups, and I can tell they're ceramic pickups because of that black box on the back of the pickup. That is a ceramic bar magnet, and I can tell it's ceramic because of the color of it. It's very dark and chalky looking. An Alnico bar magnet is more silver in color, and normally not used on cheap pickup. If there is no bar magnet on the back of your pickup, and it's just flat with six metal pole pieces showing, congratulations, you already have a vintage style pickup with Alnico pole pieces. I wanna turn these into those, so the first thing I need to do is remove that ceramic bar magnet. The best way that I've found to achieve this personally is to score around the magnet with a razor or a sharp flathead screwdriver. This will cut through the wax and glue that's around the edge of the magnet. Now you want to take a very small flathead screwdriver and work it all around the edge until you find somewhere where it'll kind of get up under the magnet and then don't pry it, turn it. Turn it and jimmy that magnet up. Once it starts to let loose, it'll completely come off very easy. You can see there's a square indention in the back of the pickup bobbin, and there are little holes in between the pole pieces. If your pickup looks like this, you can continue to follow the steps in the rest of this video. If you remove that bar magnet, the back of your pickup is flat, featureless, and especially if it has a textured look to it and it's made of a fibrous material like this, you will not be able to remove the pole pieces as they are actually what is holding the pickup together. And even if you try to replace them one at a time, the magnet wire is wound directly around the pole pieces and it'll more than likely short it out if the pole moves any at all against those tight winds. But if your pickup looks like this, or even this, and you can see the little plastic tunnels going through between the pole pieces, the entire bobbin is one piece and the winds do not touch the pole pieces. So the pole pieces can be removed. Now, I need somewhere for those pole pieces to go, so I'm gonna take an extra pickup cover that I have and place it over the pole pieces, and that'll give the perfect little gap for them to fall into when I turn over the pickup and press them out. If you don't have an extra pickup cover, you can take your pickup out of the pick guard, take the cover off of it, and flip it over. Or alternatively, you could put the pickup in a vise or support it on two pieces of wood, etc., etc. If you are doing it this way and you're worried about denning your guitar, you could put a piece of wood under it 
for support, but I'm not worried about it. There's this t-shirt bunched up under it. So to remove the pole pieces, I'm using a small ball peen hammer that I've referred to in the past as Maxwell's rusty hammer and a file as a punch. You could use a punch or a screwdriver or a nail, I suppose. They don't have to be pressed from the back out the front. You can press them from the front out the back. I'm just trying to do this with the least amount of effort and chance of damage. So this is what we're gonna stick in those holes. These are Alnico five slugs. It's a pole piece and a magnet all in one. I got this particular pack of 12 on eBay for only 10 bucks. So the next thing to start doing is checking polarity of each individual pole piece and placing them in the bobbin in the proper orientation. Since the compass originally read north pointing toward the face of the neck pickup, I'm taking these pole pieces and taking the part that north points to and putting it down into the pickup so it will come out of the face. Polarity on Alnico magnets is reversible. An Alnico magnet kind of acts like a tank for magnetism. You can use other magnets to charge, decharge it, or reverse polarity. I'll show how to do that and talk a little bit about this uh, later on in the video, but I think for consistency's sake and to uh, guarantee a better result, it's a good idea to orient them as you install them. You may find that some of them press into the holes easier than others. Uh, due to inconsistencies in manufacturing, you may have to like switch them around a little bit to get a best fit on all of them. Once I took the back of the screwdriver and pressed all the ones in by hand that I could, I took the file and started tapping the rest in and there may be somebody running to the comment section right now. Oh, you can't tap on a magnet. It will lose its magnetism. Everything in life's not so serious and delicate. They will be fine. Once they were all in there, I took that pickup cover and put it back on the front to make a spacer and I pressed them all out about a quarter of an inch. And those are way too tall, right? What are we gonna do with that? That's so they can be adjusted. And now it's time to talk about vintage stagger. And no, I'm not talking about the way Keith Richards walks. This has to do with the adjustment of the pole pieces. So, on the vintage pickups, the pole pieces were... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, that's, that's why I'm doing it this way. But, either way, they had this uh, stagger to them, like little steps. The G's way on up there and the B's sunk way down. I've heard that this was due to the wound G and the nickel strings that they used to use back in the 50s. So, I just took the soft handle of a screwdriver, started tapping these things down and looking at the picture, tapping them, looking at the picture till I get it right. And while I do that, we can talk a little bit about pole piece adjustment. A lot of people nowadays think that a vintage stagger is outdated and unneeded. Many of the classic tones create by guitar heroes were created using vintage stagger pickups. How much this actually contributed may be conjecture. I have a strat with flat pole pickups that is still super stratty sounding. If you're super into Hendrix tone, you may want to stagger the poles as a left-handed pickup to mimic stringing the guitar upside down. Generally, if you move the pole piece closer to the string, it'll be louder. Further away, it'll be quieter. You can adjust them any way you want. But once again, like I said before, if you have flat bark bobbins, adjusting your pole pieces will more than likely wreck your pickup. I felt the gals on the front of these pole pieces with a screwdriver, and they really didn't feel much weaker than the other pickup. So I grabbed an old string out of the junk box, threw it on there. Pickup works great, but in comparison, I think it could use a little charge. But first I need to mod this uh, middle pickup real quick. I've heard that the way that people remove these ceramic magnets when they're particularly stubborn is they take a soldering iron, you see this one's not even hot, and they heat up that magnet, melts the glue, and they flick it off of there. I thought this might be an opportunity for an awesome, confusing looking thumbnail. So I did this in a, such a lazy way as to not even need a soldering iron. Doing this pickup's just like doing another one. I don't see no reason to explain it all again. But I will take this as an opportunity to say that just because a pickup uses a ceramic magnet doesn't mean it's bad. It's just different. I got a burl top telly with a ceramic pickups in it. The neck pickup is a stratty beast. And the bridge pickup is a super twang machine. <laughs> Videos run 
running a little long, people got short attention spans, here's the dented version. Tore the magnet off, pressed out the pole pieces, pressed in the Alnico pole pieces. Only difference from the first pickup is these go south polarity toward the front. We'll tap that stagger into them. That looks awesome, and now we're ready to charge those pickups. The charging of the pickups while in the pick guard proved to be a little difficult to record properly. So I made a little mock-up to show exactly what I'm doing and explain a little bit about what it is I'm doing in the video and why. Okay, so here we have a spare pickup coil for demonstration. It doesn't have Alnico pole pieces, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll pretend it does. These are the ceramic magnets that I removed from the pickups earlier in the video. I want to place these to an orientation where they attract each other, where they want to stick together. Then to charge up those Alnico pole pieces, you'll take these two magnets, separate them, and then swipe the pickup back and forth through that magnetic field and that will place a charge on those Alnico magnets like a battery or a recording on a piece of magnetic tape. And this was done in an orientation that would have given the pickup a north polarity from the front. For the middle pickup where I'd want a south polarity, I would need to flip these magnets exactly 180 degrees, do it the same way. The name of the game here is to get those magnets as close as you can to the pole pieces without the pole pieces sticking to the magnet. Now I use these ceramic bar magnets not only because they're on hand in any doing this would also have those. Another reason would be to impart less of a charge on the pickups. A lot of those vintage guitars that people love the sound of, the magnetism has degraded over time. They've lost gals. But if you wanted a hotter pickup, you could use a much larger ceramic magnets or swipe it more times. Or you could even use these uh, N94 neodymium bar magnets that are so strong they'll smash your fingers. This would make a heck of a hot pickup. But as you can see, they have a tendency of wanting to jump over and stick to the pickup. This would almost be impossible to do by hand. So a lot of people connect them to a vise and swipe the pickup in between the jaws of the vise, but I couldn't much do that with the pickups in the pick guard. I would also suggest using strong neodymium if you want to change the polarity or flip the polarity of a pickup. Zip that pick guard back on real quick and we're ready to go. But when I was putting the strings back on, I thought of one thing viewer had asked previously was for me to show how to make Squire tuners great by just tightening them and adjusting the nut, which sounds a bit like a smart remark, but I don't really think it was and either way there ain't nothing but love over here. You see how wiggly and crappy that this tuning peg is? I should really change these tuners, right? Nah, check this out. Just a second here, I'm trying to screw but I can't find the hole and that's what she said. But either way, you could see that after you tighten this up, it doesn't jiggle around anymore. If you tighten it too much, it'll be a little hard to turn. You can back it off. Now, these are never going to be as good as Goto locking tuners. But if you always tune up to pitch, don't put more than about two wraps on each tuning peg. Take you a cheap set of torch uh, tip cleaners like this and widen, not deepen, but widen your nut slots. Just bet it'll do wonder. Today for the demo, we'll be coming out of the guitar with this uh, Tartarian plaid gold tip pig hog cable normally i like to say not a sponsor but they are a sponsor and also make damn good cable got a zoom multi effects out of circuit to use as a tuner we got a mosky golden horse set up as a boost joyo vintage overdrive set up as a colored dirty boost and this as a reverb will be on the whole time to maintain ambiance this going up into a full range full frequency pv keyboard amp that is getting its color and breakup from a tube preamp with a vox tone stack that we built for 30 dollars in a previous video card in the corner which is being close mic'd as per suggestion by a viewer all right
guys, that just about does it for this video. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, hit that like button and maybe subscribe. I'm Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time.